one who has come here on Christmas Eve to worship the newborn king. Tonight will follow the order of worship as you find printed in the bulletin. Tonight's service is entitled, See What Great Love. We'll begin by singing the opening hymn. You can't
And this evening on Christmas Eve, we remember that long ago, a mistake was made on the part of a village. And that village was Bethlehem. The decree went out from Caesar that everyone should go to their hometown, and for Joseph, that meant the city of Bethlehem, because he was a descendant of King David, and Bethlehem was David's town. And so when Joseph and Mary, after traveling several days, arrived in Bethlehem, you would think that surely the relatives of Joseph would provide a place for them to stay, especially since Mary was expecting a child, but no. Surely an innkeeper would be able to find some room for this young couple in the inn. But the innkeeper's answer was no. Instead, he roughly said, there's a barn around the back. Bethlehem was not a very welcoming place for the Holy Family, and Luke tells us that there was no room found for them in the inn. Well, two decades ago, a group of people did not want to make that same mistake. Instead, they wanted to have a place where they could welcome the Savior. <coughs> And worship the Savior, a place better and more permanent than a grade school or a junior high school. And so that group of people purchased this building, the Lake Zurich Baptist Church, which had been abandoned for many years. And the building was a horrible wreck. The roof leaked, the windows were broken, the basement flooded, and the entire building reeked of the smell of mildew. Could this place be better than a barn? Could this place be a place worthy of welcoming and worshiping a king? Well, the work began, and much of it done by members, not because they wanted to, but because no one could be found to do the work. And so the old steeple came down, and the old leaky roof was torn off and replaced with a new one, and a new steeple was put on the top of the roof. The old broken windows were replaced with new beautiful ones. That ugly brown paneling that clad the chancel was torn down. That baptistry was removed from the front and replaced with a proper baptismal font, altar, and pulpit, indicating that God comes to us in word and in sacraments. Those old broken pews were taken out and they were replaced with new ones. Everything was done to make sure that this place would be unlike Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. That this place would be a welcoming place. A place where we could welcome Jesus and welcome friends and neighbors and worship the newborn Christ. And of course things came down to the wire. The village didn't want to grant an occupancy permit. And the final trump card that I played 20 years ago was this. Surely, you're not going to de deny God's people the opportunity to worship Christ at Christmas, are you? <laughs> and so it was exactly 20 years ago this evening that New Life had its very first worship service in this building. December 24, 1999. And of course we're especially thankful for the gift of a building. The gift of a building and a place to worship Jesus and welcome him is nothing in comparison to the gift that God has given to us. The gift of his son. 
This is what we truly celebrate on this evening. What a wondrous gift that God would send his son into this world, such an unwelcoming place. But he came anyway. He came for us to be our savior. And in this we rejoice. But we also rejoice in something else this evening. We take it to the next level. We rejoice not only in the, that he sent his son, but that you and I are also children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. And so tonight, let's listen as the children present a wonderful message in word and song and see for ourselves what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. And we pray. Almighty God, who made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light, grant that as we have known on earth the wonder of that light, we may also behold him in all his glory in the life to come, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. Little children sing, God is so good, he's so good to me. God has always been good to his creation. God's love was at work even before the world was made. The very first verse of the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, mountains, seas, and rivers, every form of plant life, the universe with the sun, moon, and all the stars, all the living creatures on land and in the water. For all of it, he simply said, let there be, and there it was. And then he created once more. This time, the Bible chronicles a different process altogether. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27.
part two, God's love when humans sinned. The perfect world God made for his perfect children did not last. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 17 tells us more about the beginning days of God's new earth. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat it, eat from it, you will certainly die. Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Why would God give such a command? The threat of death does not sound very loving at all. Breaking the tree in the garden along with the command not to eat from what is always there in front of them seems like a recipe for disaster. With our limited reason, we might wonder how that could be. God had made the entire universe for his children, the cycle of day and night, food for nourishment, a suitable place in which to live, and you beyond compare. What love God has shown for his children, and that completely out of his goodness, for they have done nothing to earn it or deserve it. What could they do to show their love for him in return? How could God's children express their love to their most generous God? God gave them away. They could eat from any tree except one. And walking past the forbidden tree, they were able to show their love for God by following what he said. God says that his children listen to his voice and they follow him. John chapter 10, verse 27. The Genesis chapter 3 tells us what happened not long after God gave his children a way to express love for him. Now a serpent was more crafty than any other wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Genesis chapter 3 verses 1. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. Genesis chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. You will surely not die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows if when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God. and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. What happened next shows us again the great love of our God and the Father. Sin had come. Death was inevitable. But God promised a Savior who would defeat death and the devil and restore peace between God and people. Let's listen to these words from Genesis chapter 3. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and he will strike his heel. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are.
The Savior did not come right away. Adam and Eve did not know it, but it would be many centuries before the Savior would be born. God lavished his love on his children by reminding them of his promise over and over. Again and again, he renewed his promise through his believers and prophets. The prophet was perhaps the most his the prophet, with perhaps the most to say about the coming Savior, lived 800 years before the Savior was born. His name was Isaiah, and he said this. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And he will call him Emmanuel. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are.
left them and got into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and counted them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are.
We pray responsibly the Christmas prayer of the church. No. Father, with joy and wonder, we gather around the manger on this night as we recall how great is your love for us, sending your Son into our world, wrapped in our flesh, as a tiny child to forgive our sins. Thank, Thank you, you, Lord, for this Christmas gift. Jesus, on this night we recall how great is your love for us. You gave up heaven to live on earth as one of us and one with us to forgive our sins. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for this Christmas gift. <clears throat> Holy Spirit, on this night we recall how great is your love for us, gathering us together through the waters of baptism, and nourishing our faith through the word and the body and blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank, Thank you, Lord, for this Christmas gift given, received in faith, and kept on the life of eternal. Gracious Father, we pray that we not shut the Lord Jesus out of our hearts, but be ever ready to welcome him as he comes to us still today. While awaiting the last day when he comes as a thief in the night, not born in our flesh, but to resurrect all flesh and to make all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Lord, we pray that we see Jesus not only as the babe of Bethlehem, but also honor him as the Christ of the cross and recognize the majesty of the King of kings and Lord of lords, both humbly adoring and proudly proclaiming him as our King and Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <coughs> renewing, Lord, that the good news of Christmas inspire a renewing of hope, faith, joy, wonder, and witness in our hearts, our homes, in this congregation, and in the church throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting, Lord, we pray for all those who lack joy this Christmas time due to affliction spiritually, mentally, and physically. We remember those who request our prayers and those we name in our hearts. Grant that the hope and promise found in a Savior born for them will give peace in times of trial. Yeah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through the Savior born for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this Christmas gift.
yearly remembrance of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> May he who by his incarnation gathered things earthly and heavenly into one, fill us with such joy that comes with the knowledge of the forgiveness of sins and the hope of eternal life, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.